In this video, we're going to be exporting a song using Cakewalk by BandLab. Hi folks, I'm Mike and I hope you're well. Now there are many reasons why you'd want to export your song from your DAW and we'll be looking at some of the most common scenarios in today's video. We'll be covering exporting as an MP3 so that you can listen to it just about anywhere on a digital device, exporting for streaming services such as Spotify or SoundCloud, exporting for CD, you know, those shiny round things that we used to use in the olden days, and also exporting exporting for multi-track or stems. Now we'll be using Cakewalk by BandLab as our DAW, so there'll be lots of specifics for that DAW. But if you're using another one, don't worry, I still think there's plenty of useful information in this video for you. Now before we get into it, if this is your first time here and you like this kind of content, all about DAWs, home recording, gear reviews, plug-in reviews, that kind of thing, then please do help me out by subscribing and ringing the bell on YouTube so that you get notified about my future videos. Now let's get stuck into some exporting. So I'd like to start off by talking about export range because it applies to almost all of the different types of export which I'll be discussing later in this video. And it's also something which gets people unstuck because they don't understand exactly what they're doing with it. So what do I mean by export range? Well, I'll be discussing range in two different contexts here. The first one is time. How much of the track in terms of time will we, will we export? Is it the whole track from beginning to end or just a section? And the other context Context is uh, which sounds are we going to hear in that export? Is it everything that we normally hear in the mix or is it specific instruments or tracks? So let's start off by talking about the most common scenario where we just want to export the whole song from beginning to end, including everything that we can hear. Well, in order to do that in Cakewalk, we need to make sure that we have everything deselected and we can do that in a couple of ways the first way is to hit control shift and a on the keyboard and you'll see that it deselects everything that i had selected there and the other way to do it is just to click with your mouse on a blank area somewhere here and that will also deselect everything. Now that ensures that Cakewalk will now include all of the sounds in the mix in the export and will do uh, ex an export on the song from the beginning to the end of the song. Now it's important to understand how Cakewalk determines the end of the song. It's going to do that automatically by looking where the last event occurs in the song and we can see visually that it's probably down here in this song where the organ and the piano uh, have some events there. If you're not exactly sure, then you can hit control and end on the keyboard and it will take the playhead to where Cakewalk uh, thinks the last event is happening in the song. And I have to say a word of caution here because this can cause a couple of problems. Let's say, for example, in this song, on that very last event on the piano, I had a whole heap of reverb or delay, some effects which will go on past the last event. Now, unfortunately, if we do that, Cakewalk will cut them off because it sees the song as having been finished. So in order to uh, take care of that, it's an easy fix. We can just take um, that last event there, that piano, and we can just drag it out to a point where um, those effects will have finished. Now, even though the last event in terms of a note has occurred, Cakewalk will now see the end of that track there as the last event. So if I hit control and end on my keyboard again, you'll see that the playhead moves there, and then we will be including any of those audio effects that we had on that track. Now let's say that we do only want to export a section of the song, let's say this chorus here. That's easy enough, we just go up to the ruler and we drag out a selection there and now um, only that section of the song will be included in the export. Now you'll notice here that as soon as I drag out a selection it also selects all of the different instruments or tracks in the song. You can see the number of the track there has that orange background which indicates it's selected. Now you may only want to select specific tracks for an export. So let's say I want to do that, then all I have to do is select say this guitar here if I want that, then I'll control shift on this cajon here 
and then I'll control shift on say this vocal up here and that will make sure that only of those particular tracks are included in the export. So that's a really quick and easy way to either include everything in your export or just sections of the song. And if you're having unexpected results in your export, some things are missing, then it may be because you haven't made your selections correctly. So one of the most common things that we'll want to do is export the whole song so that we can listen to it outside of our DAW. Perhaps we want to listen to it on our phone or in a media player or even email it to someone else so that they can have a listen. So the best solution for that is to export the whole song as an MP3. So I'm going to start off by clicking Control Shift and A on my keyboard. That just makes sure that everything is deselected in my song, meaning that everything will be included in the export. I'll then go up to File, click on that hover on export and click on audio and that brings up our export audio dialog box so I'm going to start off by selecting the file type so I'll select mp3 and that just makes sure if we do that first that we get appropriate choices down the bottom here I'm then going to go to the source category and make sure I have entire mix selected so that just makes sure that everything that we can hear gets included in the output um, I'm then going to set my sample rate now it's set to 48 which is the same sample rate which I recorded the song in you can see that at the top here of my screen I recorded it at 48 kilohertz and 24 bit um, I'm just going to leave that 48 but you could select anything you wish there um, and then with bit depth for mp3 we only get one choice and that's 16 now we're actually going from recording it originally in 24 bit in the DAW and we're lowering it in our export to 16 so we need to make sure we apply some dithering and that is our selection down here now what happens is is that when you downgrade from a higher bit depth to a lower bit depth you can get some audio artifacts which are kind of unpleasant to listen to so we need to apply dithering to smooth those out so we can't hear them now I've selected triangular which um, I find is always a good choice for me but you can experiment with the others to see which you prefer the next thing I want to make sure um, with mix enables over here is that all of the checkbox are selected so I'm making sure I'm getting all of my automation and my effects and my buses all that kind of stuff everything I can hear in the mix and I'm ready to export so I'll give it a, a name I'll just call it test and I'll click on the export button now this is going to bring up another dialog box which I'll just drag over here you can see and this is our actual mp3 export options and we have a little bit of control here um, over adding some metadata and controlling the quality of the mp3 so I'm going to start off with my bit rate now these days where file sizes don't matter so much we can really go for high quality mp3s and we'll still be able to email them and in most circumstances in any case so I've just selected the highest bit depth here which means the quality is going to be good um, uh, but the file size is going to be fairly big if you do want to keep your file size smaller then you could go down to say 128 is a very common one that's going to make your file size smaller or if you want something in between another option is select is to select variable variable bit rate encoding here and you can select that and um, it's probably going to end up somewhere in between it's going to be smaller than the highest bit depth but I'm going to uh, select the bit rate of 320. Um, I don't ever use um, enabling the high or low pass filters. You probably don't need those for a normal export. And of course, we keep the mode to stereo mode. Um, you also have a slider here for quality. As I say, these days, um, it's going to affect the file size. Um, I'm just going to go for the best possible quality here. So I'll drag it all the way over to the left. Now, the next thing that we can do is encode some ID3 info. This is basically metadata, which goes along with the MP3, like the title, the artist, the album, etc. Um, this just means that when you play in uh, an MP3 player, it's going to show those things to whoever's listing you know the title artist year all of those kinds of things so I'm going to quickly go ahead and fill that out and speed up the video and now that I have filled out all of that info I just click OK and the export process begins 
So another common scenario is to export your song in preparation for uploading it to a streaming service. That may be someone like Spotify or iTunes or perhaps SoundCloud. Now you want to check with your actual provider what the best settings are for export. And there may be a range of settings which they recommend. I'll put some links into the description to the most common distributors so you can check with those. I happen to be using DistroKid, but you could be using anyone else. The important thing is here, you want to keep it as high quality as possible because you've got to remember they will re-encode it on their end which can result into some loss of quality so make sure you keep it high at this point so we're going to start off again by selecting the whole track and i'm going to make sure everything's deselected to do that so i'll hit Control, shift and a on my keyboard and then i'll go up to file hover on export and click on audio and that brings up our export dialog box again now I'm going to select a file type of WAV. You don't want to be using MP3 if you can help it. Um, there's going to be very, very few providers who are going to restrict you to MP3. A much better option is going to be a WAV file. It's going to be much higher quality. The file size will be much bigger, but remember at this stage it's going to be the quality which is the most important thing. The next thing we want to do is select the correct source, so we can just leave that here on the entire mix. Then for channel format we want stereo. Now the sample rate is important here. Now I know I said I want things to be as high as possible, but there's really no point in selecting a, a sample rate which is higher than we originally recorded our song at in the DAW. So I recorded it at 48 kilohertz, so I'm just gonna leave that sample rate at 48 kilohertz. Now, we also wanna keep the bit depth high, so it's set to 16 at the moment. I'm gonna increase it to 24. Again, I could have selected 32 or beyond, but there's not much point because I originally recorded the song at a bit depth of 24. I can't increase the quality at this stage. Now, because I've kept it at 24, I mean, I could apply dithering, but there's no need, so I'll click on none for that. And then in mix enables, I'll just make sure that all of the boxes are checked so that I'm getting everything, including all the tracks and the buses and the effects, all that good stuff. Then I can just go ahead and give it a name, so I'll call it stream, and then I will click on export. Now it's not nearly as common as it used to be, but you may still want to export your song to play on a CD, on a regular audio CD. So I'm just gonna quickly show you how to do that. Again, I'm gonna hit Control, Shift and A to deselect everything, go up to File, uh, hover on Export and click on Audio. Now we wanna make sure that when we're exporting and in preparation to burn a track to a CD, we're gonna select a file type of WAV, um, then we are going to select again the entire mix in the source category, keep the channel format as stereo. Now for sample rate, we wanna make sure we select 44 kilohertz, 44.1 kilohertz, and then for bit depth, make sure you've got it set to 16, regardless of what you've originally recorded at, guys, for this. And if we have downgraded our bit depth from something higher than 16, then do make sure you apply dithering, as we saw in the previous examples. Again, make sure you've got everything selected over here. Go ahead and give your file a name, so we'll call it CD, and I'll click Export, and we're ready to use that in another application application to actually burn it as a CD audio track. So the next scenario is when we're exporting either multi-track or stems. Now, this may not be familiar to you, but it's incredibly useful, especially when you're working with someone else on the mix. Perhaps you're doing the tracking, the recording, but you're gonna give all of the tracks to someone else to mix. Now, this subject is confused somewhat by the fact that many people in the community use the term stems when they really mean multi-track. So I'm gonna clear that up for you, but it's important to remember this because you may wanna check with anyone else that you're working with, what they're going to expect from the export because they may be confusing uh, the terms multi-track and stem. So do double check with people. Now we're gonna start off by looking at a multi-track export to begin with. So again, I'm gonna make sure everything in my DAW is deselected by hitting Control, Shift and A, and then I'll click on File, um, Export and Audio. 
And I'll just zoom in for you there so you can more clearly see what's going on. So the first thing I'm going to do is select a file type of wave because I want the quality to be really high on this. This is for a multi-track export. Um, so then for the source category, I'm going to select tracks. And you'll see all of my tracks appear there. And that is all of the tracks which I have recorded in my song. I could deselect some of them if I wish by hitting control and then clicking on their name. And that will exclude those particular tracks from the export but I want everything in there which I recorded I'll keep the channel format as stereo I'll keep the sample rate as 48 because that's the original sample rate uh, that I recorded the song at in my DAW so match your original settings of your DAW for that and then um, in the bit depth I'm going to select 24 because again I originally recorded this song at 24 bit and because I'm not changing the bit depth then I can turn the dithering off now it's important over here to make the correct selection in terms of mix enables now some people when they do a multi-track output are going to output all the tracks and include things like effects whereas some people really want the the track to be kept playing with no effects on there at all perhaps not even any automation so you, again you want to double check with the person that you're exporting this uh, for so I'm going to go through and I'm not going to have anything switched on here I'll just keep the 20 the 64 bit engine on but I'm not going to have any automation or any effects included and that means that the person receiving the multi-track can apply whatever effects and automation they think is appropriate for the mix now I'm going to give it a name which I'll call MT for multi-track and then I click on export now what it's actually going to do and it's warning us here it's going to actually create a separate exported track for every single uh, track that we have in our project and it's telling you the names of them there so I'll go ahead and click OK and this is going to take a while so I'll quickly speed up the video So you can see now if I drag in my uh, folder here, you can see all of those different tracks there, um, all with that MT prefix there and with the name of each instrument. And they are the absolute plain uh, wave files of those instruments and they could be uh, imported into almost any uh, major DAW uh, to have effects applied to them and remixed as we wish. So if that's a multi-track export, what is a stem export? Well, let's take a look at that now. We'll have a look at our song again here. And I want to talk to you a little bit how, how this mix is made up. If we take, for example, this bass guitar here in green, you can see next to it, there's another green track there. That is the bass guitar amp. So I have one which is a DI bass, and that's also going through an amplifier. And I have that on a separate track. Now, those are both output to a bus over here which you can see just on the right hand side I'll just drag this out and that is this green channel here and that is my bass guitar now that would represent a stem so a stem is often a combination of tracks which combine together to make one track so another example here would be my drums so um, you can see all of my drum tracks here, kick drum, snare drum, hi-hat, toms, etc., all on these sort of brownie orange tracks. They all output to uh, this track over here on the right, which is just that one drum track just there. And that again would be a stem. So um, there's some variations on how you can organize your stems, but you generally have a lot less stems than you do uh, multi-tracks. Now in terms of of exporting that in cakewalk I go up to file again I'll go to export audio now this time rather than selecting tracks I'm going to select buses because the way I've made sure I organize my uh, track is to make sure that every instrument even if it's say recorded just a single instrument like a piano and there's just on one track I just make sure that goes to a bus called piano. I have all of my drums, all of the different tracks going to one bus called drums, etc., etc. And you can see here, uh, these are my final buses. Now you may want to take some of them out. You may have specific buses for effects, which you may or may not want to include. And the same again for the mix enables. Normally stems do have the effects applied on them, but you may want to check with uh, whoever's expecting to get the files um, that what 
their expectations are again. And again, we go ahead and export that. We'd give it a file name, which is a prefix, and it'll use that prefix and append each track name to that file as it exports. Now it's not unusual for people to face problems when exporting. If that's you, then please do ask in the comments down below and myself or someone else will do their best to help you out. Now you may be thinking to yourself, Mike, how can I thank you for imparting this knowledge to me today? Well, I'll tell you how you can thank me, my friend. You can hit the like button right away. And if you haven't done so already, please do subscribe and ring the bell on YouTube so that you get notified about my future videos. Now I'm gonna suggest a couple of my other videos on the screen now and I'm going to do this until you click on one. Ooh, hurt my neck. I shouldn't do that. See you in the next video.